This video is sponsored by Brilliant. Hey guys, this looks like a fun one. It says the square root of i is equal to what? This is actually inspired from a post I saw on Reddit where someone had the square root of i, but it was the wrong number. If I can find it, I'll put the post on the screen, but this is not the correct square root of i. So let's find out for ourselves what it is. First, we should define what is i. i is the imaginary number such that i squared is equal to negative one. Another way you can think of it is i is equal to the square root of negative one. This looks important, let's put a box around it. When dealing with imaginary numbers, you can't combine them with real numbers. Here's an example of how you'd have to express it. There's a real part and an imaginary part, and the whole thing is called a complex number. So if we're gonna find the square root of i, chances are it's a complex number. It's gonna be something like a plus b i, and we gotta figure out what is a and what is the corresponding b. And this will be our first step. Let's copy it down, and in order to get this i alone on the left-hand side, let's square both sides of the equation. On the left-hand side, the square and the square root will cancel each other out. And on the right-hand side, a plus bi squared means the same thing as a plus bi times a plus bi. And now we can multiply this out, also known as foiling. We have a times a, which is equal to a squared, a times bi, which is equal to a bi, bi times a, which is a bi, and then bi times bi, which would be positive b times b is b squared, and i times i is i squared. First, we can bring down this a squared. The abi plus abi would be 2abi. And then for the third term, we can bring down the b squared. And then for the i squared, if we go up to the notes, i squared is equal to negative 1. That's the definition of i. So we can rewrite this i squared as negative 1. And positive b squared times negative 1 is equal to negative b squared. So this is still a complex number. This portion with the i is the imaginary portion. Let's put it in a red box. And then the terms that don't contain an i, those are real, so we'll put those in a blue box. Let's bring our two blue parts together and let's rewrite it like this. So we have the real portion and the imaginary portion. Let's move them up here. And now on the left-hand side, we have one i for the imaginary portion and there's nothing for the real portion. And let's put the real part in a blue box and the imaginary part in a red box. In order for this to be true, the imaginary parts would have to be equal and the real parts would have to be equal. So this i would have to equal 2abi, and the 0 would have to equal a squared minus b squared. Let's start with this one on the left. Let's get the b all by itself. So let's divide both sides by 2ai. On the left-hand side, these two i's will cancel each other out, so we have 1 over 2a. And then on the right-hand side, the 2, the a, and the i will cancel out, so we'll just have b. So we know that b is equal to 1 over 2a. This looks important. Let's put a box around it. Now let's go to this other equation. In the place of this b, Let's substitute 1 over 2a. And now this 1 over 2a squared, the squared is going to distribute to the 1, the 2, and the a. So we can simplify this a little bit. 1 squared is equal to 1, and 2 squared is equal to 4. And we can smush this together. Next, we can add 1 over 4a squared to both sides of the equation. On the left-hand side, 0 plus this is this. And then on the right-hand side, these cancel each other out, leaving us with a squared. We can rewrite the a squared as a squared over 1, and then we can cross multiply. 4a squared times a squared is 4a to the fourth, and that's going to be equal to 1 times 1, which is 1. Then we can divide both sides by 4, and that'll give us a to the fourth power is equal to 1 fourth. Next, we can square root both sides of the equation. On the left-hand side, the square root of a to the fourth is a squared, and on the right-hand side, this square root can distribute to top and bottom. Square root of 1 is equal to 1, and square root of 4 is equal to 2. Now we have two possible values for a squared. It can either be positive one half or negative one half. Let's clean this up and look at both scenarios. The first scenario is where a squared is equal to negative one half, and the second scenario is where a squared is equal to positive one half. Let's start on the left-hand side. Let's copy it down and let's square root both sides. Now let's simplify this. Square root of a squared is equal to a. And for this square root of negative one half, let's pull out the negative one. From our notes, square root of negative one is equal to i. So let's change this into an i. And then for the fraction, we can distribute the square root. Square root of one is equal to one, and square root of two is square root of two. We're not supposed to have a radical in the denominator, so let's multiply top and bottom by root two. On top, one times square root of two is equal to square root of two, and on bottom, square root of two times square root of two is equal to two. Now we have two values for a, plus or minus i root two over two. Let's do the same thing to this scenario. We can square root both sides of the equation, 
on the left-hand side, we'll have a. And on the right-hand side with this fraction, the square root can distribute to top and bottom. And the square root of 1 is equal to 1. We're not supposed to have this radical in the denominator, so let's multiply top and bottom by radical 2. On top, 1 times radical 2 is equal to radical 2. And on bottom, radical 2 times radical 2 is equal to 2. So now we have four possible values of a. Let's look at all four of those. a is either equal to negative i root 2 over 2 or positive i root 2 over 2. or negative root 2 over 2 or positive root 2 over 2. These are the four possible values for a. Earlier we identified that b is equal to 1 over 2a, so let's put that down for all four of these. So now in the place of these a's, let's plug in the corresponding a's. So for this first one, we're going to plug in negative i root 2 over 2. And then for the rest of these, we'll plug in these corresponding values of a. And then we can simplify this. This 2 and this 2 can cancel each other out. And same thing for these 2's, these 2's, and these 2's. Next, we have a square root in the denominator, so let's multiply top and bottom by root 2. And all three of these have a square root in the denominator, so let's do it to all of them. On top, all of these are 1 times square root of 2, so they'll all just be square root of 2. And then on bottom, square root of 2 times square root of 2 is equal to 2. And that's going to be true for all three of these. So now these on the right-hand side all look totally fine, but these on the left, we have some i's in the denominator. Since i is equal to the square root of negative 1, we don't really want i's in the denominator because that would be a radical in the denominator. So we can fix both of these by multiplying top and bottom by i. These two i's on top, let's bring them to the front. And then on the bottoms, i times i is equal to i squared, and i times i is equal to i squared. And then going back to these notes, i squared is equal to negative 1, so each of these are going to change into a negative 1. For this one, the negative and negative 1 can cancel each other out. And then for this one, the negative can be brought to the front. Now everything looks good. So for this first one, we'll plug in this for a and this for b. And we'll do the same thing for the rest of them. So now we're almost done. We have a little bit more to do. For this one right here, this i and this i can combine to give us i squared. And then this i squared is equal to negative 1, so that'll make this negative. And this plus negative can just become minus. Let's smush things together. And now the i is the first term, so let's just rearrange it like this. Then for this one, we have an i and an i that make it i squared. i squared is equal to negative 1, and negative times negative makes this positive. And then we can smush things together and rearrange them. And then on this one, the negative 2 on bottom is kind of weird, so let's make this plus minus. And then this one right here looks fine. Now we have four answers for square root of i. That seems a little excessive. If we look here, these are the exact same. We can move the i over here. These are literally the exact same, so let's get rid of this one. And then comparing these two, same thing, they're the exact same, so we can get rid of this one. But now we have two solutions for the square root of i. This one right here, and this one right here. This is the answer to our question. Let's put a box around it. How exciting. I thought this challenge was brilliant. Speaking of brilliant, let's talk about brilliant. Brilliant has thousands of lessons in math, data analysis, programming, and AI. And all of them are interactive, which is the best way to learn. If you would like more practice with imaginary and complex numbers, brilliant has it. It also has all the lessons you need for the foundational math so you can fully understand the complex numbers. Building a daily habit of interactive learning is one of the best ways to learn math. It's also one of the most fun ways, and Brilliant is a great way to do this. If you want to try Brilliant.org, they have a free 30-day trial. You can visit Brilliant.org slash AnnieMath or click on the link in the description. You can also get 20% off an annual premium plan. How exciting.